G'day everyone, I'm Dave. In today's video, we're going to be diagnosing an unresponsive cordless drill. To diagnose today's problem, we're going to be using a multimeter, a needle nose pliers, magnetic pickup, a multi-bit screwdriver, and two magnetic trays. So when looking at a cordless drill, the best thing to do is start from one end and work our way all the way through to the other end. Starting end, obviously, is our power supply, or in this case, our battery. We're going to start with the charger itself to verify that we are getting power coming out of the charger to we're charging the battery. To do that, we use our multimeter, we plug in our charger, knowing that this is now live. We have to be very careful because we are dealing with AC. We take our probe and shove it all the way, if we can see our slot, all the way right down, as far down as you can, so that way there's no exposed metal. Repeat with the other probe into the second slot. Turn on our meter, and in this case, we can definitely see we do have voltage coming across the meter. Um, it's, it's showing negative because we have the probes currently reversed. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's definitely showing we have a working charger. Now that we've looked at our charger, our next step is to look at the battery itself to see if the battery is charged. We're going to remove the battery from the drill and repeat a very similar process by using our probes on our multimeter and going across our two connectors. In this case, we're dealing with a DC battery for our charger, so we're not as concerned about safety. I can put my fingers onto it without any worry about being shocked. As we go across, we're definitely reading zero. We're just gonna rub them a little bit just to make sure to, we're getting a good contact. We're still getting zero. And this battery has been sitting on the charger overnight, so we can definitely assume that the battery itself needs to be replaced. So now that we've looked at the charger and the battery, we're gonna continue on diagnosing the drill in case there's other issues. To do so, we have to disassemble the drill, going step by step, as we've talked about in other videos, removing all the screws, storing them properly in the tray in the order in which we remove them, and then slowly taking apart the drill. In this case, all our screws are identical, so we don't have to worry too much about reassembly. We'll pop off the back unit. We'll see that there is a fair bit of dirt in this one, but that doesn't, isn't going to stop it from working. And we'll continue on with our disassembly. Every one of these cordless drills is slightly different. Um, in this case, we took off the back, then we'll take off the side. Um, with a different drill, it might be slightly different, but the process is the same. Backing the screws off partially, double checking we can split it, and then removing the screws completely. Now that we have all the screws out of the front, we're going to slowly and carefully pull the front out, listening for any parts that might fall out that we may have missed, as well as paying attention to how everything comes out. In this case, you have to be very careful because the, these gears just sit in, and it's very easy for the gears just to fall out, in which case you just may have to pop them back in. This part here is our mechanical aspect that does our turning and our gears. We're not going to worry about that for the moment. We're going to work our way, just continue on with the electric side of it. Uh, our next step in continuing the process from one end to the other end is to look at a connection between our battery and our switch, as well as from the switch to the motor. So we'll open it up. Again, we'll take our multimeter, double quick check to make sure it is working. And we're going to check our switch itself by putting one probe into one of the connectors from the battery lifting the switch out. In every case, it's slightly different. In this case, our connectors are on our back side. We'll put a probe on one, nothing. And the other one, nothing. And that's the case it should be until we press the switch. So we're gonna press the switch and double check. And again, we're still not getting anything. We're just gonna double check, make sure this is working. It is. So we know the switch itself is also gone. So we'll be looking at replacing the switch. We will continue on though, just in case there are other things wrong, and further our diagnosis. Our next step is going from the switch up to our brushes. In this case, our brush is hidden right here, and we just follow the brown lead coming up to our connector, which then comes across to our particular brush. I've already removed the spring to make it easier to view, and again, we'll just repeat the process the connector on the brown, double check we have connectivity, and then follow the brown wire to see if there's a break in the wire itself. We now know the brown wire is perfectly fine. We're then going to go away to our brush, 
We know our brush is also fine. We repeat for the other side and flip the motor over to get the other brush. Here we left the spring on so we can see what the spring is. We just reach underneath it and go right to the brush. So we know from the switch to the motor is perfectly fine so we don't have to replace the wires. We're left with replacing the switch and then looking at the motor itself to see if there's any damage to the motor. Now that we've eliminated everything and we're down to just the motor itself, we can have a better look at the motor. We notice that we do have bent over tabs locking the end plate on as well as the front plate. Chances of this being sold as a single unit is extremely high. So it's not worth opening up at this point. It's best to go online, double check if we can buy individual components within the motor or we have to buy the motor as a whole. Do any of your tools need a repair? Visit us at ereplacementparts.com and easily find the parts you need and have them shipped right to your door.